All right, now for the sixth question, it is given that in the expansion of this particular term, uh, the ratio of the coefficient of x power of 4 when we open this and the coefficient of x will be equal to 3. Now, given this, we have to find the possible values of this constant a. Now, whenever we are asked to find out the coefficients of the expansion of a particular term, and if you're not able to think about it very quickly that, yeah, if I'll expand this, the coefficient would be equal to this value. If you are not able to do this kind of things, there is a small trick that we can apply. It basically follows from the formula of the binomial expansion. So let's say that we are having a a plus b to the power of n that we have to expand. We know that the first term will be nc0 uh, multiplied by a to the power of 0. Then let's say b to the power of n minus 0, which is nothing but n. Then the second term would be nc1 and a will increase the power of a and then decrease the power of b by one one value and it will keep on going or else the other way around you can increase the power sorry you can decrease the power of a and increase the power of b from zero both of them will work right that's the concept of this expansion so now from the same method what i am doing is i am just trying to find out a general term so what is a general term it would be ncr then a to the power of r because see, if it's zero, the R over here is zero, right? If it's the value of R is one, this is also one. So this R and this R will be same. And then the B, which is the second term, will have the power of N minus R. So starting from N minus zero, it was N, then N minus one, the next term would be one and so on and so forth, right? We just need to sum these terms together. So what is the uh, formula of the summation symbol? It's this particular symbol, where R starts from zero and goes till the last one. So this is the simple term. Now, because we want to get the coefficient of x to the power of something, right? So that power of something and x terms are basically involved either in A or B, or maybe in both. In this case, it's in both, right? It's also in this term, also in this term. So we don't really care about all the kind of terms. Okay, We are really caring about this particular thing. And then we are going to say that the this coefficient should be equivalent to some kind of let's say constant that's what we are trying to find the coefficient of x power of 4 and x in the next try. So this is something what we are trying to achieve. So let's see what do we get over here. The first term over here is x by a. The first term over here is x by a to the power of r and then the second term b is a x to the power of negative 2. I'm just uh, shifting x on the top so square on the bottom becomes minus 2 on the top and now the power is n minus r the value of n is 7 so it becomes 7 minus r now this should be equivalent to some kind of a constant that we don't uh, really know and we don't really bother about that to be honest we are just trying to say that some the we are trying to get the x power of 4 only what we are trying to get from here we are trying to get get power of x together Right. So what will be the power of x? Here it would be x power of r. And from here it would be x power of minus 2 multiplied by 7 minus r. Right. So I'll, I'll not even uh, bother writing x power of r. I'll just write r from the first term. And over here I am having minus 2 multiplied by 7 minus r. Right. That would be the power of x. Minus 2 into 7 minus r. So minus 2, 7 minus r and this powers this x power should be equal to 4 for the first part right the coefficient of x power of 4 so what happens for what value of r do we get that coefficient of x power of 4 so let's find that r so if i simplify this it's uh, basically r minus 14 minus or plus 2r is equals to 4 and now this will be 3r is equals to 14 plus 4 is 18 so this means that value of r must be 6 to get the coefficient of x power of 4. Now, similarly, I can do this for the second when this value is not 4, but value is 1. Now, see, this kind of technique is very simple to remember. If you are able to implement it once and if you are able to understand it in a proper way, then you can directly go ahead and say that, yeah, here is having a power of r. Here it's 2 multiplied by 7 minus r. So it will be minus 2 because it's in the bottom it goes on the top it becomes minus 2 and then multiplied by 7 minus r and then equate it to whatever is the term that's a quick way of remembering this formula right 
and all of this i am explaining in a proper way all these kind of techniques in my particular uh, this kind of patches for the october november it's going to start very soon so please go ahead and register for it if you are uh, if you are willing to learn all of these techniques that you need to know to solve all these kind of questions very accurately all right so now uh, over here we are going to get r is equals to 18 by 3 is equal to 6 as i mentioned and now we can do this for the power when it's equal to 1 so r minus 14 plus 2 r is equals to 1 i am taking this point and saying that now the coefficient is equal to 1. So now this is 3r is equals to 15. And therefore, r will be equal to 5. So this is for the coefficient when uh, for x power of 1. And this is for the coefficient of x power of 4. So now we are having what should be the values of r in this formula. right? To get x power of 4 and uh, x power of 1. So now we are going to implement this. I am going to just uh, mention only one thing. That this will be when r is equal to 6. This is when r is equal to 5. You don't need to implement this method if you are able to just manually think about it. Uh, if you are able to manually think about it, all this kind of method is not required. But just to save time in not thinking and doing something instead of it, right? Then this is a very handy method, all right? So yeah, now let's find what is the coefficient of x power of 4. So coefficient of x power of 4 is what? ncr, so 7 c4 multiplied by the first term x by a to the power of 6 oh sorry it's not 4 over here it's 6 actually right 7 c6 r is 6 not 4 right r value is 6 i i wrote 4 because of this which is not correct but yeah anyway and now after this we are having a divided by x square 7 minus 6 is 1 and now if you just open this, if you use your Kelsey, what is 7C6? What is 7C6? It would be 7, I guess. Yes, it's 7 because 7C6, so it's going to be 7. And then this will be turned to x power of 6 divided by a power of 6 multiplied by a divided by x square. So now if you further simplify this, you are going to get 7. Then this a is going to be cutting with uh, one a over here so this will be having a to the power of five and this will be x power of four at the end right so seven x power of four divided by a power of five that's what we are getting uh, for the coefficient of x power of four that is seven divided by a power of five now similarly you can do the same stuff for coefficient of x when we know that the value of r is equal to 5. So we can say that coefficient of x is when we are having 7c5 multiplied by x by a to the power of 5 times a by x squared to the power of 7 minus 5 is 2. And now 7, 5, 7, C5, what's the value? Let's check the Kelsey. 7, C5 is coming out to be 21. This will be x power of 5 divided by a power of 5 multiplied by a square divided by x power of 4. So obviously this will cu cut out to x and we are left with 21. Uh, this is a power of 5, actually, not a5, a power of 5. So now this square goes away with this. We are left with 3 a cube. So 21 a cube is something what we are getting for this, right? So 21 by a cube. So what are the coefficients of x power of an x? That's something we got 7 by a power of 5 and 21 by a cube respectively. So now we'll just take it and substitute it in this formula. So it's going to become 7 divided by a power of 5 divided by 21 divided by a cube equals to 3. So now we are simply left with, this implies uh, 7 a power 5 multiplied by a cube by 21 equals to 3. And uh, if I just create a space over here for us. So now we can take this one step further and say that this is gone we are left with a square in the bottom. So this is 7 
pi 21 a square is equal to 3. And therefore, 21 a square is equals to, or I can just say that a square is equal to, a square is equal to 7 divided by 21 times 3. All right. And now if you solve this in the KLC, you will be getting two values of a because of the square root. So plus minus square root of something, right? So let, let's check what's the value. So square root of 7 divided by 21 into 3, if I do, I am getting 1 by 3. So plus minus 1 by 3 is the final answer of question 6. I hope that you have got this idea of how to find the coefficient. This was just a demonstration that how that like my, this is my personal favorite. I don't really like to think much more than like, let's say about 30 seconds. I don't like to think about that. If I'm not able to think, I'll just start with something. Okay. I, I don't like to waste time because the time that we get over here is pretty much less, right? If you're not really fluent, if you're not able to complete paper before time, then spending a lot of time in thinking is just going to waste your time and you won't be able to complete the whole paper in given point of time. So make sure that you are uh, aware about this formula that I had shared about uh, in order to find the coefficient of any x power of something for any kind of expansion.